What's going on everybody? It's Game Unboxing Reviews here and welcome back to another LEGO Marvel Superheroes 2 video. So in today's video I'm going to show you guys how to create Dr. Voodoo using the in-game customizer. So without further ado, let's get to it. Alright, so let's get started. First off, let's go into appearance. We're going to go to hair. And we're going to go all the way to the top here until we find the long male hairstyle. And we're of course going to have that in black. Then once you've done that, you want to go to head. And you want to find Electro 2099's head. Which is down here somewhere. There it is. There we are. Nice. And you want it as this skin tone. Now, the reason I'm going with this head is because I saw some comic pages of Dr. Voodoo and he had, you know, the skull kind of face paint and things and it looked awesome. I absolutely loved that design and I really wanted to have it in game because I have made Dr. Voodoo without this and I just thought he looks so much cooler with it. So I am definitely going to stick with this. This is what I, you know, came up with and I love it. So that is definitely what I'm going to showcase. But, you know, just for the heck of it, what I will do is once we finish making the character I'll show him without the face paint as well just to show you guys what he would look like but I much prefer this anyway back to the creation so once you've done that you want to go to body and you want to find black bolts then for the arms I couldn't really find any arms that fit you know Dr. Voodoo I mean you could if you wanted to maybe give him black bolts arms or something like that but I just thought I would just go with black then for the hands he doesn't wear any gloves I don't think so just match the skin tone and then for the hips, the hips that I went with are Doctor Strange. And the legs that I went with are, I can't remember the name of them, but they're around here somewhere. Yep, that's it, Black Bolts. So you want Black Bolts legs as well. Or you could go with this one instead, which is down here somewhere. Uh, this one, yeah, you could go with Silks if you wanted to. But I really like uh, Black Bolts. I think they look pretty cool. So that's the one I'm going to go with. Now, once you've done that, you're going to go to Capes. You're going to go with the tattered cape and you're going to make that red. I don't think it's like dark red or anything. I think it's just just normal red. And there you go. That is the appearance done. I think he looks pretty cool. Now, like I said, I'll just quickly show you what he would look like if he didn't have the face paint on. And I think the head that I chose for that is Luke Cage. See, he looks all right. You know, it, it looks like kind of like Dr. Voodoo, but I just think, you know, with the Electro 2099 head, it just looks so much better. I absolutely love that design. So that is definitely what I'm sticking with. All right, so now we move on to the weapons. So the weapon that I gave him was a staff, and we're going to go with, I think it's this one right here. Yeah, I went with this one, and I made it dark brown. So as you can see here, this is the dark brown. Cool. Now we can move on to the abilities. So the abilities that I gave Brother Voodoo were... I pre pretty much looked at everything he had in LEGO Marvel's Avengers, and I gave him them. And then I also looked at, you know, things he can do in the comics, and I tried to work out ways to introduce that in the game. So we're going to give him Techno Access, Mind Control, Magic, Crack LEGO Walls. We're also going to give him a Vine Cut. Uh, we'll have, what else, Super Strength. We're not going to have time manipulation because he doesn't have the time stone. I just thought that didn't make any sense because in this game, you know, Doctor Strange, he has the time stone. That is how he can manipulate time. And Doctor Voodoo clearly doesn't have it in, uh, you know, in this design. So I just thought, well, why would you give him it? So that's why I'm not going to give him it. But of course, you guys can totally do that if you want to. But we are going to have rune tracing, portal create, and I think we'll have teleport and tracking as well. Nice, so just a quick rundown, we got tracking, teleport, rune tracing, portal create, super strength, vine cut, crack lego walls, mind control, magic, and techno access. Awesome, right, now on to combat. So for tap square, I went with fighting, and then for hold square, I went with explosion attack. Now, the explosion style that I went with, I think it's explosion style one, and then I think I went with this green here. And basically what I tried to do here is I'm going to make it an ice explosion. And I'm going to explain this as best as I can. So, you know, I thought it would be kind of cool is maybe you could pretend that this ability is something to do with Daniel Drum. You know, maybe he's cast a, a spell and, uh, you know, the uh, the enemy has seen Daniel Drum and it's it, they've frozen because they've just seen a ghost. They're absolutely shocked. So they've just, you know, completely frozen. I mean, I know it's a block of ice, but I just thought, you know... I try to be a bit creative here, and I thought it, it kind of worked. So it goes like that to an enemy, and they're like, Oh, it's a ghost! And then they freeze. I mean, you know, it, it, it works, it doesn't work, I don't know. But I just, I like what I came up with. I thought it was cool, so, yeah. And that is the green that we're going to go with. There are other greens as well. Um, 
but I think this one looks kind of cool. I was just trying to get something to do with Daniel Drum in there because those attacks from the Lego Marvel's Avengers Doctor Strange DLC were so cool. And unfortunately, we don't have that in this game, but I really wanted to try and put some of it into this because he was a great character to play as. And like I said, Ice Explosion. Alright, now then, moving on to Tap Circle. So on Tap Circle, we're going to have Bolts. We're going to have Bolt Origin left hand because, of course, in his right hand, he's got the uh, the staff. So on his left hand, you want to be able to shoot. Thing is, though, even though I'm doing that, when you actually shoot, the staff disappears. It's like he puts it away. But in LEGO Marvel's Avengers, he only shot with his left hand. So I figured, you know... I want to be correct with that. So that's what I'm going to do. So left hand, he shoots. Bolt style, we're going to go with four. And then we're going to go with the purple color. And it deals out heat damage. Nice. And then for the same, when you hold down square, not square, sorry, circle, uh, you're going to go to beam damage type heat. You're going to go to beam style two, like this. You're going to go with beam origin left hand, like you can already see. And then for the beam color, just make it purple. Nice. Alright, so now then on to tap X. So double tap X, you're going to have flight obviously, and then we might as well have hyper jump as well. Cool, so we've done the appearance, the weapons, the abilities, now we just need to put on the passive traits and then name them and choose a background image. So for the passive traits, let's see here, health icon, what can we go with? I think we'll go with one of these, maybe, or maybe you'd want this, you know, because it's the color of his powers. I think I'll go with black. I think that looks cool. Health type will just go with standard. Um, I know I think he has uh, regeneration abilities, but I'm just going to leave it as standard. Uh, for the voice, just choose any male voice. I'll go with voice 2. Uh, and then for movement speed, I just go with default. And then for target reticle, hmm, what should we go with here? I haven't actually used that one, but I think that's like man things. So I don't know. Looks kind of weird, doesn't it? I tell you what, we'll just go with this one. I think that one works quite nicely. All right, cool. Now we just need to name him and then choose a background image. Now, here's the thing about this. It won't let me type in Dr. Voodoo correctly. So this isn't a spelling mistake for me. Like, just, just watch. I'll show you. So you put in Dr. And then Voodoo. See? Yeah, correct spelling. Doesn't let you have it. Doesn't let you have it. So instead, you have to put Dr. And then Voodoo. Do, but you have to get rid of one O. And there you go, it works. So it's not correct spelling, but at least you can have the name in there. For the background image, uh, I don't know, what should we go with? Let me see here. I, yeah, I like that one a lot. Yes, let's definitely go with that. All right, cool. Now, of course, what we're going to do is drop Dr. Voodoo into the Chronopolis hub world and see just what he can do. And here he is. This is, of course, my custom-made Dr. Voodoo made in LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 2. Let's just get a good look at him right here. Looking very, very cool. And like I said, I'm really happy with the decision to keep that face because I just think without the skull face, it doesn't look as cool. You know, he looks kind of... I don't know, it just didn't look enough like Dr. Voodoo to me. And this isn't really based on how he looked in the LEGO Marvel's Avengers DLC or anything like that. This is more based on how he looks in the comics. And, you know, from all the comic pages I saw, he had a red cape, not a purple one, like in LEGO Marvel's Avengers. And also, you know, from the comic covers that I saw, where he had the skull face paint, it looked so cool. I think sometimes it was even a mask. It just looked awesome, and I really wanted that on my version of Dr. Voodoo. So, yeah, I'm really happy with it. So what can he do? Well, he can attack with his staff like this pretty simple attacks but still cool to be able to do that he can also if we go over here he can shoot these bolts like that with just the left hand of course and he can also shoot a beam a purple beam that deals out heat damage with his left hand there we go nice and probably my favorite ability is this one right here which i'm just going to quickly run over here get to this snowman Oh, wait, that's the wrong button. It's uh, this one. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, see, I love this ability because I think it makes sense. You know, he, an enemy sees the ghost of Daniel Drum or the spirit or, you know, however you want to say it. And they get a fright and then they freeze. I just think it kind of makes sense to me. If it doesn't make sense to you guys, then fair enough. But I just love it. I think it'll be cool. I haven't actually tried to see if it will freeze the enemies yet. So we'll see. But listen to this for a second. You hear that? It's creepy, isn't it? There's like they, it makes weird whispering noises and stuff. Very strange. Anyway, let's go. You know, go actually fight some crime. 
Right, should be some crime down here. Now, first off, I want to see if it will freeze the enemy. Let's see, shall we? Hopefully it does. Yes! That's what I'm talking about. So, you can pretend, I know he's not actually there, but you can pretend maybe they saw... Maybe Brother Voodoo or Dr. Voodoo, however you want to say his name. Maybe, you know, he put... Uh, something in their mind to make them think they're seeing Daniel Drum and they were scared and then they froze, you know, something like that. I don't know. I thought it looked, I thought it makes sense. Alright. Just trying to be a bit creative with the abilities instead of doing the same stuff all the time. This guy is still frozen. There we go. Nice. Awesome. Now, one thing I really want to talk about is Daniel Drum was in uh, Doctor Strange. He was in the first movie. Obviously, there's only one movie at the moment. And, you know, I think he, he was in a he was in a deleted scene, and then there was another, like, there's a few other scenes that he's in the movie. So he's definitely in the movie, but he's in a really good deleted scene as well. Um, and, of course, he was killed by Caecilius. But the thing is, with these Marvel movies, the Marvel Studios ones, what I always say is, if a character has had at least one movie, chances are they'll get like two more. They'll get a trilogy. That's usually how this works. Although in saying that, you know, there's talk of Black Widow getting a movie. I wonder if they'll do the same for her, if they'll do a trilogy of Black, uh, Black Widow movies, or maybe they'll do just one and done. You know, one Black Widow movie and then that's it. I mean, we'll have to see. It depends on how well it does. I think it'll do really well though, so we might get quite a few. It'd be cool if they did uh, Black Widow 1 set after Avengers 4 and then, you know, the other Black Widow movies maybe have them prequels so we can learn more about Budapest and how, you know, Black Widow uh, came across Winter Soldier to the point where she can't wear bikinis anymore. <laughs> you know, like, like that line in uh, The Winter Soldier. So, yeah, we'll see. But anyway, back to Doctor Strange. So, I think, you know, we will definitely get Doctor Strange 2 and we'll get Doctor Strange 3 and at some point... I'm pretty certain they will introduce Dr. Voodoo. I feel like it would be crazy for them not to. He's such an awesome character. And they've already, you know, set up the death of Daniel Drum. So I think it makes sense. I think they will do it. But, you know, we'll have to wait and see. Okay, strange. Um, but I really hope they do it. Because I think it would be so cool to see Dr. Voodoo in the MCU. I'd really like uh, the Doctor Strange movies to get a bit scarier, you know? Like, I love the first Doctor Strange movie. I thought it was great. I think Benedict Cumberbatch is an incredible Doctor Strange. But I really would like Scott Derrickson to uh, show off more, more horror. You know, because he is a horror director, and I'm not saying make a horror movie, but I mean, try to make the movie a bit scarier. Like, uh, I, he's been saying that he wants to use the villain Nightmare, and I think that would be really cool if you made Doctor Strange... I don't know if you would say you would make it into a horror movie, but I would love to see him try to use a bit more of what he's learned from horror films in Doctor Strange 2 with the villain of Nightmare. So imagine it's like Doctor Strange teams up with Doctor Voodoo to take on Nightmare. That would be pretty incredible. I just think with a character like Nightmare, you could probably do some scary stuff. And that's one of the great things about uh, the Doctor Strange movie, of course. The first one is it's very trippy and weird, and that's what people wanted. And with a character like Nightmare, I think you'd want to be kind of spooked a few times. So I think I think it could be done. I'm not saying they have to make it terrifying to the point where it has to change the rating to uh, something that's just ridiculous. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that I think you could make Doctor Strange 2... A bit creepy. I'm trying to think of a comparison of a Marvel Studios movie we've already had, but I can't really think of one. I mean, to be honest, after Avengers Infinity War, you know, Thanos, he, in the first five minutes, I think the Russo brothers have said that he is going to be... You're going to see straight away how he is the biggest, the baddest, you know, villain the Avengers have ever faced. So... I think, you know, after that, it's possible that they could do any villain and make them scary because, you know, people will be used to it by then because Thanos... Time, Thanos will probably be the MCU's best villain of all time, maybe. Unless they, of course, introduce other huge villains like Doctor Doom, Galactus, um, Kang the Conqueror, of course. That would be pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Detected a crime pretty close to you. Hey, wouldn't it but that just sounds like the perfect sequel to Doctor Strange for me. Doctor Voodoo introduced and Nightmare is the villain. I think that would be pretty pretty cool. 
But we'll have to wait and see. I mean, I don't even know when Doctor Strange 2 is going to happen. I think a lot of people think it'll be in the 2020 lineup. Like, that will be one of the 2020 uh, MCU movies. But, I don't know. You're a real doll. I think the talk is at the moment a lot of people think that the 2020 MCU movies will be uh, Doctor Strange 2, Guardians of the Galaxy 3, ow, that hurt, uh, and, um, and Black Widow. And I could see that. I could see that. Although, you know, a lot of people also believe that uh, Spider-Man is going to be in... Uh, not Spider-Man, sorry. Doctor Strange is going to be in Spider-Man 2. Uh, Spider-Man Homecoming sequel. That A lot of people believe that. And I believe that as well. But now I'm not so sure. Like, I'm starting to think maybe it'll be a surprise character. Thing is, we have to watch Avengers Infinity War before actually working out who the team-up character is going to be in one of those movies. And we have to watch Avengers 4 because, of course, Spider-Man 2 is going to be set after Avengers 4. So we can't say for sure who's going to be the character that will be in the Spider-Man sequel. It made sense for Tony Stark to be the character in Civil War because, you know, Tony and Peter had a great uh, friendship. And it was, you know, you had to build on that after Spider-Man. People wanted to see more of those characters interacting, and that's what they did. And from what we've heard of, uh, of uh, Infinity War... <laughs> Apparently, Spider-Man and Doctor Strange get on. So that's why everyone thinks that Spider-Man and Doctor Strange are going to team up in Spider-Man 2. Which I think would be cool. I mean, you know, going off Doctor Voodoo for a second, imagine if Spider-Man 2, the villain, is Mysterio. So it's Doctor Strange and Spider-Man versus Mysterio. Oh, man, that would be cool. You know, I couldn't say if that's going to happen or not, but that would sure be amazing. But yeah, we've got a lot of really exciting stuff to look forward to. I think that's the thing. Everyone, you know, well, not everyone. A lot of people say, oh, after Avengers 4, that's it for the MCU. It's done. And I'm sorry, but that's a silly thing to say. That that's really makes no sense to say that the MCU is done after Avengers 4. They're just getting started. <laughs> like, Avengers 4 is the beginning of the end. Like, no, sorry, Avengers Infinity War is the beginning of the end. And Avengers 4... Uh, will like kick off a new beginning for the MCU you know like you got to think how many movies are coming out after Avengers 4 that we already know about not counting the 20 something movies they've said are in development I mean there's Spider-Man, Captain Marvel, uh, oh wait Captain Marvel's after Infinity War but you know Spider-Man, Doctor Strange 2, Guardians 3, Black Widow, probably Black Panther 2, Captain Marvel 2, Ant-Man the Wasp 3, you know, like, there's so many movies still to come. And then, of course, you know, James Gunn is shaping the cosmic side of the MCU, where we'll probably see Adam Warlock and, uh, maybe even the Silver Surfer and Galactus and things, and, and well, not just the Fox stuff, like, there's stuff that, that, uh, Marvel already owned that they're probably going to introduce soon, and it's just... There's no way the MCU is suddenly going to be like, right, okay, we're done. You know, no more MCU movies. Um, thanks for watching. <laughs> like, that's not going to happen. They're, they're going to continue making those films for a very long time. With Spider-Man alone, I think you'll get six films. I really do feel like you'd get six films. Either six films with Peter Parker, you know, Tom Holland, or three films with Peter Parker, and then three films with Miles Morales. It's going to go either way. Oh, hang on. I haven't done this one yet. I'm gonna quickly do it. Here comes a question. Which all-seeing entity has been immortalized as part of oh yeah, supreme the intelligence? The correct what is Kang the Conqueror's companion called? Ravona. Well done. The ancient Egyptian sport known as dung ball is played by played with the help of which animal? Uh, beetles? Yeah. The there we go. Nice. Hey, we did all of them. Oh, we unlocked Captain America's jet. Cool. First, I've, I've never seen that before. Is that like a new model? I don't think I've seen that before. But yeah, uh, in you know, in, in uh, s closing, the MCU is just beginning, guys. It's not going to finish. I mean, of course, everything comes to an end eventually. You know, the, the MCU will probably one day finish, but not anytime soon. Um, I mean... I also don't think it's going to reboot either. I think that would be stupid. I would be really, really disappointed if Marvel were to be like, oh, by the way, this is the new Iron Man. Like, no. 
Chris Evans himself has even said that you couldn't get someone else to play Iron Man after Robert Downey Jr. He's just, he is Tony Stark. He's become that role. He, they are one and the same. It's crazy. I honestly, I've said this before, but I can't think of one person in the MCU I'd want to recast. I just, I think they all do their part so well. They are those characters for me. Oh, I'm gonna freeze these guys. Let's see it. Let's do it. Yeah! And then burn this guy. Nice. Hey, we can do a team of both. Whoa! Okay, that's cool. Doctor Voodoo and Doctor Strange teaming up. Pretty awesome. Thanks. You're welcome. Another criminal in the bag. But yeah, guys, let me know in the comment section below what is your dream Doctor Strange sequel. What do you want to see from Doctor Strange 2? Like I've said, for me, it would be a scarier vibe with Nightmare being the villain and Doctor Voodoo being introduced as like a new, um, a new like, uh, companion, basically. Uh, side character. Although, Paul Rudd has been saying recently that, uh, like, Ant-Man and the Wasp, you know, it's, it's as much Wasp's movie, I think, as it is... Ant-Man's and I would love that to happen with Doctor Strange 2 maybe yes it's introducing uh, uh, Doctor Voodoo but he has like a lot of scenes like he is as much important to Doctor Strange so it would kind of be like a shared movie he was super <gasps> although it makes a lot of sense to do that with Ant-Man the Wasp I'm not sure if it would make the same sense to do that with Doctor Voodoo so we'll see whatever Marvel has planned for either of those characters I'm sure they'll do amazing hey I'm gonna freeze you all right, that's it. You're gonna be frozen. There you go. See, I warned you. Hey, that was mine to freeze. Not cool. Not cool, strange. Take that. I'm gonna wait for this guy to get out. Don't, don't do it, strange. He's mine. Aha, I got you. All right, let's beat him up. Boom. Nice. Thank goodness you came along. Yep, just doing my job. That ought to make the streets a little safer. Oh, can someone do something about those awful Kang announcements? Listening to the guy who destroyed our home prattle on all day is not my idea of a good time. This game definitely made me want to see uh, Kang the Conqueror in the MCU, I think more than ever. Like, he would be such a cool villain to see in, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I mean, you know, there's been teasers and speculation online and things that Avengers 4 is going to be messing with time. That we're going to see, like, alternate realities and stuff like that. And I don't know, we'll see. That could be possible, and it would be amazing if they do that. Um, but if they don't... I think they should definitely leave it for Kang the Conqueror someday. Like, it would be incredible to see Spider-Man 2099 teaming up with, uh, you know, like Thor and Hulk and stuff from, like, modern day. You know, like, taking the concept of LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 2, but in live action. Like, that would be truly amazing. I'm honestly shocked we've never had a Spider-Man 2099 anything really like he was really popular in the 90s i believe spider-man unlimited was their attempt i think there was yeah that was the attempt at making a spider-man 2099 like themed show but i think they didn't use miguel o'hara because at the time P peter parker was more popular so they didn't want to risk it which i thought was ridiculous because you know back then kids didn't care, pretty much now even kids don't care who's under the mask when they're watching these cartoons. Like, I, you know, you, you just see Spider-Man. You don't think about that until you're a bit a bit older. And when I mean a bit older, I don't mean, like, old. I mean, like, uh, just a little bit older. But when those ki cartoons came out, and you're a kid and you're watching them, you're watching Spider-Man. You're not watching it for Peter Parker. You're wanting to see Spider-Man fight Venom and Carnage and stuff like that. You're not bothered about who is under the mask. It, it takes a little bit... When you're a Spider-Man fan, you, you know... you. You, uh, you go from liking Spider-Man and then you grow to liking Peter Parker. And at least that's how I went. And 
now I like, you know, I like every aspect of the character and his backstory and all his uh, allies and things. But when you're a kid, you just care about watching Spider-Man fight bad guys. And that's why I never understood why Spider-Man Unlimited, they chose to make a futuristic Peter Parker. They could have done Miguel O'Hara. They could have done it. You have returned. It would have been amazing. And I think that show would have, um, you know, stood the test of time. I mean, it's, it's still a decent show, but I think it would have been so much cooler to be able to go on YouTube, type in Spider-Man 2099, and there's this awesome cartoon all about Miguel O'Hara. And I think he, Miguel was even really popular in the 90s, so you could have, it could have even, like, lasted longer. Because I think it was cancelled after, what was it, one? Maybe even two? Two or one or two series? Um, maybe if they introduced Miguel instead, it might have survived longer. These are the questions, you know? But yeah, I would love to see Miguel get, like, a movie or something. I really hope that he's in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, you know, the Miles Morales animated movie by Sony. I think it would be that would be a really cool movie uh, to introduce Spider-Man we haven't seen on the big screen. Of course, we've got Miles Morales, but what about Ben Riley? What about, uh, you know, Kane, um, 2099, Noir? Oh, just so many, so many different Spider-Man. We'll, we'll see. It'll be interesting to see how they do it. I also hope this isn't the only Spider-Verse movie we ever get, because I really want to see Marvel Studios one day do a Spider-Man, uh, live-action Spider-Man movie, which brings back Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire, and they meet Tom Holland's Spider-Man. That would be pretty incredible. Tom Holland, Andrew Garfield, and Tobey Maguire all meeting each other in the movie. I mean, that would be amazing. And you could have their supporting cast come back and everything. And I think in Spider-Man Edge of Time, there was uh, a point in that game where 2099 was stuck in modern day and modern day was stuck in, sorry, yeah, 2099 Spider-Man was stuck in modern day and the amazing Spider-Man was stuck in 2099. And it would be really cool to see something like that in a Spider-Verse movie, you know? So you could say that Andrew Garfield gets stuck in the MCU. Or Tobey Maguire gets stuck in the uh, in Andrew Garfield's universe with Oscorp and everything. I would just love to see them do that. The, the fun you could have with that would be really interesting. And there's some awesome fan art online of a Spider-Verse movie with, you know, Tobey, Andrew and Tom. And it just... The fan art just makes you want the movie more and more. This guy's seriously annoying. Right, you. Hey! I love that move so much. That is so cool. What? Are you serious? There we go. I took him down. Nice. Alright, let's go, Doctor Strange. After you, Doctor Voodoo. I wonder if they'll call him uh, Doctor Voodoo in the movies. Or if uh, they'll just refer to him as Brother Voodoo, or just call him by his name. Like, it's interesting when they do that. Sometimes, you know, they might not say the superhero name. They might just say their alter ego or something. Twenty ninety nine. Right. Any Romans? No, no Romans. Okay. There's usually like Romans there to fight and stuff like that, but no. There's no bad guys in twenty ninety nine. What the heck? Hmm. Strange. Pun not intended. <laughs> Runner. But yeah, I hope uh, I hope that Doctor Voodoo somehow finds his way into uh, Lego Marvel's Superheroes 2, like an official version, because I, I don't know if he has anything to do with like the Runaways or Cloak and Dagger or something, but I would really like to see him make a return because he was a lot of fun to play as in Lego Marvel's Avengers, and one of the reasons he was so much fun is was because he used Daniel Drum for attacks and stuff. You know, he came out of nowhere and started spooking enemies and things, and it was just so cool. Like, that was part of the Lego Marvel's Avengers Doctor Strange DLC, the all new, all different one. And it was just awesome. I loved, loved, loved that one. That one was just so cool. 
The mission was great. The characters were great. It was just super cool. Okay, these bad guys are really annoying. Like, these are the ones that, you know, you, ha you have to wait because they throw their spear and then they they go after their spear and, the, you know, they, they can't attack you and it's just, it's annoying. See, these attacks don't do a thing and now I'm dead. There you go. Point proven. Oh, okay. All right. It's working. Good, good. Spin me around, Doctor Strange. Yep, that works. Nice. Time to freeze you. What? Come on. Let me freeze you. Oh, that worked. Yes. Nice. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, come on, come on. Really? Wow. Well, that worked, so that's good. Anyway, guys, I think that'll do it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed watching it as much as I've enjoyed making it because, you know, no one really asked for uh, Dr. Voodoo from what I could uh, see in the comments. You know, I don't think anyone specifically said, make Dr. Voodoo, please, but uh, I. I just wanted to. I was just looking through the characters in Lego Marvel's Avengers because, like I said the other day, I was looking through Lego Marvel's Avengers character roster and I thought, oh, okay, I'll make uh, Sentry because I haven't made Sentry. And then after I did that video, people were like, make Void, so I made Void. And I went back to Lego Marvel's Avengers, looked to see if I could make any other characters that aren't in this game that were in that one, and I came up with Doctor Voodoo. And I'm really happy with the way it turned out, and I just hope you guys are too. And of course, like I said in the character creator section of the video, you don't have to put the uh, skull, you know, face paint on if you don't want to. I just think he looks awesome with it. And there's actually some crime going on, so why don't we just take care of one more group of bad guys? But yeah, you don't have to have that if you don't want to. I just think it looks so much better with it. That's just my decision. Oh, that was cool. He actually used his staff to get up. This is really bad. Take that! I'm gonna freeze everyone. See the spirit of Daniel Drum. Wow, that guy is like... A, he's immune to the spirit. There we go. Great teamwork, Strange. Alright, now we can go back to Manhattan. I mean, uh, Avengers Noir. Avengers Noir? Avengers uh, Mansion. Alright, cool. Alright guys, so that's pretty much it for this video. I want to thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for lots more videos real soon. And as always, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe.